Memorial Day is a federal holiday, specifically the last Monday in May. But that is the real Memorial Day. The time most celebrated is the weekend before. I cannot wish you or anyone a happy Memorial Day. By the way of being an army brat, it is not at all appropriate. I wish no one would say it to me. Don't get me wrong. Lots of us love this long weekend at the end of May when it's not rain. The unofficial start of summer, fun barbecues, and I don't want to begrudge anyone this time. I just want us all to remember Memorial Day. Memorial Day's meaning is somber. It is to remember the dead that died during combat, conflict, war. For me, Memorial Day brings up my dad, Thomas Maslenka, U.S. Army retired, deceased of service-connected disabilities and his long, proud service. And my son, Joshua Wheeler, U.S. Army combat veteran, who would rather that you never knew he served. These two men that I treasure dearly, they never met. One died of service-connected disabilities in 1980. The other was not born until 1983. But for a very brief period, they shared the same life experience, war. One in Korea, the other in Iraq, both haunted by the truths of their experience. One so proud of what he did in Korea. All I know, is that he worked deciphering codes and he was missing an action on the day that I was born. The, the other proudly exclaimed on 9-11, I am joining now. Thankfully that was held off a bit while he trained with the Army National Guard, but he was deployed in 2004 to Iraq. So I want to mainly focus on my son here but please don't forget my immensely proud dad. Their experiences were so much the same, yet their personal deliverance is so different. My son, as I said, would rather no one knew that he went to war for a nation that had no business being in war. Joshua will tell you today that he still puts all his energy into fighting. He fights for equality, he takes his daughters to women's marches. My body, my choice, the youngest chanted when she was three. He has used his body to stand between law enforcement and people of color on courthouse steps. He takes classes to make sure that he understands his own white fragility, women's equality, Black Lives Matters, LGBTQ plus rights, voter suppression, cannot happen on his watch. If they were both here today, my father immensely proud, and my son almost ashamed, what would they think of each other? Would my son open my dad's eyes to his reality of war as a political and financial tool of rich white men? Or would my dad be confused or maybe even embarrassed that a man who went to war is not proud of what he gave for our country. Our country. Come to think of it, this very land that we call our country was stolen in wars, taken just by overpowering. These brave service members that we remember this weekend, tomorrow, they did not go gently into that good night they were taken, and I still wonder for what. My father never spoke of war to his children. I asked my son recently if he does. He said, yes, mom. My kids know that I was in the army just like their great grandfather, and they know I went to war. I have defined war to the best of their understanding. That means when they stop asking, I stop telling. They know that I am neither proud nor ashamed of that time in my life. It is just that, a time in my life. My son saw a lot of loss for a 20-year-old. 
He now occasionally mentions to me times when he thought he would not come home from Iraq. My dad saw a lot in Korea. I know this from the distant looks and screaming nightmares that he left a piece of himself in that war. War has left a mark on so many of us. War continues to wreak havoc all over the world. As a Unitarian Universalist, I value peace. I embrace respecting differences. We can disagree and we can also come to respectful resolutions of conflict. I know that most situations are more complicated here and abroad. We rarely get to know the true reasons that others feel so strongly in their own convictions that they, we, cannot see another perspective. All over the world, you see wars, what we are told over the generations before us wanted, and we fight first. But before we struggle with, perhaps they were mistaken in their fight and we can find peace. What I do know is we humans need to be better for the future generations of this world. We owe it to the next seven generations to be willing to be wrong, to lay down weapons and extend ourselves in peace. On this day that unofficially marks the beginning of summer, please take a moment of silence in the quiet of your soul and remember all those who have served and made the ultimate sacrifice and commit to making peace in your own heart. May it be so. For most of us, Memorial Day does not come to mind without TAPS. I would like to share some words with you from Reverend Paul S. Sawyer, who serves as the settled minister of the First Unitarian, excuse me, the First Universalist Society of Heartland, Vermont. He remembers. The first time I ever played taps was at summer camp when I was 10 years old. That was the year I started playing trumpet, so I can only imagine how it sounded. I know there was no way that I could have hit that high note near the end. The first time I played taps in honor of those who died was in high school when I was contacted by the local Legion commander. He asked if I would mind occasionally being called to play taps at graveside services for veterans. I agreed. For the next couple of years, when there was a need, I would take my place with the Legion Honor Guard, wait for three volleys of shots to ring out, and play the simple 24 notes of taps as clearly and as best as I could. Each time, the Legion commander would quietly slip me a $10 bill, and that's about all that taps meant to me for a while. It was easy to do. It got me out of school, and I earned a little money. And then one day, that changed. The man I was called upon to play for that day was the father of one of my Boy Scout leaders. Back then, like most of the adults I knew, I thought my assistant scoutmaster was pretty old, <laughs> but his father was a World War II veteran. So now thinking back, that means that both my leader and his father were relatively young, too young for their places there that morning as the honored dead and the grieving son that day, as I began to play taps, this man, who I knew as a wise and kind and relatively hard in the old boys, in the old boy, Boy Scout, wilderness leader sort of way, fell to his knees, overwhelmed with tears. I'm not sure how I made it through the whole piece that day, but after that, I thought I might never be able to play taps again. Today, whether I'm playing it or hearing it, Tap means something, taps means something close to what it once meant, to the reasons for which it was written and originally used. Once upon a time, taps was a signal that the camp was relatively safe. It meant that you were not under siege or under attack of any kind. It meant that you were reasonably sure there were no enemy soldiers to worry about, at least a bugle calls distance away. To a whole camp of soldiers, the notes of taps meant that unless you were on duty, you could close your eyes and you could sleep in peace. I didn't know that story or the sentiment all those years ago when I played taps for pocket money in the local cemetery. But in that meaning of taps, something speaks to me in my heart and soul about dying. And for those of us who remain, 
about remembering well.